Shalom. This week we are reading Parshat Breshit, Genesis 1-1. We are beginning our yearly cycle of reading, studying the portions of the Torah all over again. And every year we plummet the depths of the Torah anew and discover all sorts of wellsprings of new information, new insights, deeper level of understanding the mysteries of the Creator, the mysteries of the Torah, and indeed, Parshat Breshit, the first Torah portion, is replete with every manner of mystery, every secret of the universe, the story of creation, and everything that that entails. And, of course, Adam HaRishon, the first man. He himself is a great mystery. How do we understand Adam HaRishon? Who was this person, the handiwork of God, personal creation of the Almighty Himself. And perhaps the more that we can understand Adam HaRishon, the first man, the more that we can understand ourselves. Just as Adam HaRishon, the first man, is a true mystery, a true enigma, so too every human being, his descendant, is also so difficult to understand who we are, what we are, what drives us, what motivates us. Maybe if we understood something of the greatness, the spiritual essence of Adam HaRishon, it would help us to greater appreciate ourselves and each other. Indeed, our sages tell us that when God originally created Adam HaRishon, the first man, Adam, before the sin of eating from the tree of knowledge, the angels, the great Seraphim, the ministering angels, they were confused. They were, they were confounded by the presence of this great person because he had such a tremendous spiritual stature and he was so imbued with holiness and he had such a lofty elevation that the angels were confused and they thought of singing praises before him just as they sing praises before Hashem. Indeed, there are several phrases, several sentences from the book of Psalms that show us that time of history that reflects that confusion that the angels felt that they were so impressed with the greatness of Adam that they actually thought that he was like them, an angel. For example, in Psalms 8, we find this verse in verse 6, yet you have made him, starting from verse 5, what is frail man that you should remember him and the son of mortal man that you should be mindful of him? And verse 6 states, yet you have made him but slightly less than the angels and crowned him with soul and splendor. You give him dominion over your handiwork. You placed everything under his feet. And then we find again in the book of Psalms, this time in chapter, this time in chapter 82, where we read, You are angelic, sons of the Most High are you all. And these verses reflect this period in Adam's life when indeed he was on the level of the angels. But what does that really mean? Our sages tell us that the history, the background, the, the uh, concept that's being referred to here is that which we read in the second chapter of the book of Genesis, Parshat Breshit, where we read that Hashem brought all of the animals to Adam for him to name. And it was man who gave names to all the animals. Indeed, we read, Now Hashem God had formed out of the ground every beast of the field and every bird of the sky and brought them to the man to see what he would call each one. And whatever the man called each living creature, that remained its names, its name. <clears throat> and that verse seems to imply that God himself was waiting to see what names Adam would give to the animals. And the verse continues, verse 20, And the man assigned names to all the cattle, and to the birds of the sky, and to every beast of the field. But as for man, he did not find a helper corresponding to him. And our sages tell us that this is the background of those verses in the book of Psalms, and that when the angels were confused and sought to sing praise before man, they they said to God, who is this? And they sought to understand his greatness, and they sought to minimize it, but then God showed them that they were not capable of naming the animals. 
and they apparently tried, and he gave them the opportunity to name the animals, and they were not successful. But then, when it was man's turn, man was able to name the animals, and whatever name he gave them, as the verse tells us, that is the name that we have to this very day. What is the meaning of this very enigmatic teaching? Our sages explain to us the concept here is that Adam, man, such a spiritual being, yet a being whose feet are on the ground, a being who is rooted in this earth, but yet who possesses a godly soul. Only he, and not the angels, who are totally otherworldly, only he was able to gaze at each animal and perceive the spiritual essence, the character, the nature, the purpose, the spark of holiness, as it were, in every single animal. He was able to do that, and the angels were not. And God told the angels, this is man's greatness, because he is a physical creature. He is in this world, yet he is able to have this special sense of perception and to perceive something on such a rarefied spiritual level. And that truly as a, a microcosmic teaching, that is the essence of the greatness of man. Man is a physical being. He exists in this world. But God gave him such a tremendous insight, such potential, such an ability to unite all the worlds. Only man, and not the angels, is able to gaze in this world and find the spiritual essence and thus reveal the potential of every level of creation. No wonder the angels were jealous, and no wonder the angels sought to sing praise mistakenly before man. And the idea is, again, if we understand the mystery of Adam HaRishon, we understand the mystery of ourselves and each other and every person. This is the purpose of man, and we all are Adam HaRishon. We all carry his legacy. And the purpose of man, we read in this first chapter of the book of Genesis, as we begin to unravel the secrets of creation, the purpose of man in this world, then and now, is to gaze deeply at creation and to find God there everywhere and to be able to reveal the inner spiritual nature of every aspect of creation and to be in a position to unite heaven and earth, to bring it all together. And, and thus, as our, as our sages tell us, truly man is higher than the angels.